Our Old Testament reading comes from Psalm 9. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return ye children of man. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are as asleep in the morning. They are like grass which groweth up in the morning and flourisheth, and groweth up in the evening. It is cut down and withered. For we are consumed by thy anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins, in the light of thy countenance. For all of our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet there is strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy life. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto the stone. This is 1 through 12 of Psalm 9. Our New Testament scripture from Philippians chapter 2. Amen. This text and middle of 1 Corinthians 15 are the pastor's scripture. The pastor does not love to discuss. And it reads on this wise If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any vows and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in loneliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, <coughs> but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Oh, glory. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, he should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Thus ends the reading of God's holy word. Let us pray. Pray now. God of our weary years. God of our silent tears. Mighty Father. That has brought us thus far along the way. Oh Lord, we pause 
in submission to thine divine will. We know, God, you're too wise to make mistakes, too just to do wrong. Lord, we pray your presence in this place. Lord, we pray your comfort as only you can comfort. Oh God, we pray that you might undergird this family. Let them know, oh God, that this is not the end of the story for Dr. Dawson. Oh God, we thank you for his life. We, oh God, thank you for his testimony. We thank you for the lives he's touched. And we thank you, oh God, that you allowed him many years, oh God, to preach the word in this place and throughout the length and breadth of this country. Bless, oh God, Mrs. Dawson, Lord, we pray that you might keep her in perfect peace. Oh God, we know that you can do anything but fail. And so we pray, oh God, your comfort. We know, oh God, you're not hard of hearing. We pray your comfort on this congregation, this little rock church. We pray, oh God, for Pastor McRae. Oh God, we pray that you might use him today. That he, oh God, might preach unto us the gospel of everlasting life. Keep it in the forefront of our minds, oh God, where Jesus says, I'm the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Thank you, Lord, for light upon light. Oh, if we believe in thee, oh God, this is the only hell we'll ever know. Thank you, sir. Now, Lord, we know you're not hard of hearing again. We ask your comfort in Jesus' precious name. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 Reverend Craig Henry, thank you so much for reading out the Old Testament scripture. Reverend Dr. Allen Hand, thank you for the New Testament reading. Reverend Earl Jones, thank you for the inspiring prayer. And now for a musical selection. We call upon the Little Rock Baptist Church Combined Choir. Sing to us, Selection 7.
Okay. Reverend Eddie Karam, won't you come? Reverend Eddie Karam is the next moderator and the moderator elect of the New York Missionary Baptist Association. Reverend Eddie Karam, amen. amen. So I preside over all of so all of the clergy that is here to Reverend Gene McCray, our homeless, the preacher for the evening, and to Sister Dawson, the Dawson family, and to the Little Rock Baptist Church family. Good evening. Yeah. Reverend Dawson was a preacher's preacher. His dedication to the gospel ministry was pure and sincere. Absolutely. In this denominational work, he was faithful. Yes. That he worked his way up the ranks. Yes, mm -hmm. On behalf of our moderator, Reverend Team Nibrod, Jeff C. Twa, I would like to ask all of the members of the New York Missionary Baptist Association to please stand. Sister Dawson, to the Little Rock family, those standing share their love for you and for the great work that Reverend Dawson has done for the New York Missionary Baptist Association. He has and will always be in the canon of heroes for this great progressive work. On a personal note, a few years ago when Reverend um, Dawson, you may be seated, one minute left, that I deemed and called Reverend Dawson Batman. I called him Batman because he was like a superhero in the gospel faith. Because very rarely do you see transitional leadership. Those of you who are comic book fans know that Batman, Bruce Wayne, had a understudy who he would speak into his ear and allow him to carry all the work of the King Crusader. And we are grateful for the work that Reverend Dawson has done and for the, the he left the Little Rock Baptist Church in good hands. Amen. And I'm quite sure that Reverend Dawson can say, it is well with my soul. Amen. To Pastor Gene McCray to Side an officer, Dr. Deloach, to the members of clergy, to uh, Sister Dawson, and to you, the Little Rock uh, family. Uh, it was eight years ago that I received an unexpected call. Uh, the Reverend Charles Dawson called me from Auburn, New York, and uh, told me he wanted to nominate me to be the second vice president of the Progressive uh, New York State Progressive Baptist Convention. I consented to do that. And I stand here today as president, not because of me, but I stand here because he saw something in me. And he saw me worthy of this convention. Uh, Reverend Dawson loved the convention. Uh, I say Reverend Dawson loved the convention. He would ride my back. Every time he seen me, he said, Lyndon, why was you not at the association? Why, why you did not attend the state convention? And he, he had the audacity enough one time, he said, listen here, young man, when you do your church calendar, you, you should put all the convention dates down so you don't have any conflict. He loved the convention. He stuck up for the convention. We thank God for him today. And we thank God for his legacy and we stand on his shoulders and we thank God for the convention work that he did in the New York Progressive Baptist State Convention. He is the former president 
and we stand on his shoulders. We're grateful to have two former presidents with us, Reverend Carl Gell, former president, the Reverend Dr. Randy Ware, former president. We're grateful for them all today. Won't you put your hands together for the life of Reverend Charles B. Dawson. Come on, you can be doing your life. We think this is a celebration. We thank God for tonight. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Once again, to the presiding officer, to our eulogist for the evening, Pastor McGray, to the Reverend Clergy, Lady Dawson, and the Dawson family, Little Rock family. To God be the Lord for the great things he has done. We are sad tonight. Yes, our hearts are hurting. But we rejoice in the fact that God allowed Pastor Dawson, the young preacher's mentor, to transfer his residence from East New York to New Jerusalem. And so we give God praise tonight, as it was forestated by my state president, Pastor Dawson loved the Progressive National Baptist Convention. He worked hard yep. in the Progressive National Baptist Convention. Yep. He would often tell us young preachers, especially he'd look at me and say, Royale, when you go to this convention, don't hang in the hallway, go to these meetings, and find out what New York State needs to do to uphold our part in the convention. And because I followed his advice, he pushed me to become the Eastern Regional Vice President at Large. And I thank God for it. Whenever he called on the phone, there were two personal reasons I knew he would call. If he called me and he started off with Royale, I knew it was time of instructions and I needed to listen. But if he called and said, hey, buddy, I knew he wanted some information. <laughs> and often he would call when the convention was about to come up. He thought that I had an inside scoop of where the next national meeting would be. Hey buddy, on the road, you know anything about where the host hotel is so I can make my reservations. I'm told that he was so excited about our next upcoming board meeting in San Antonio, yeah. Texas in January, yeah. that he made his reservation yeah. to go to the convention. Well, on early Sunday morning, his reservation was confirmed for another place. The head of the clerk told him, Pastor Dawson, your room is now ready. And so, after his room was ready, he said these words, went from Mount Pisgah, lofty heights. I view my home and take my flight. This robe of flesh I'll drop and run to seize the everlasting prize and shout while passing through the air. Farewell, sweet hour of prayer. Thank you, Dr. Dawson, for every lesson you taught us. Thank you for being our mentor, our guide, our leader, and our protector. May you rest well and enjoy the time in your brand new room. God bless you. God, give you up for the great things he has done. What God is doing right now. I give honor to two, 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 everybody. I give honor to everybody because you know who you are, what your positions are. <laughs> Wherever you are, that's who you are. I give you honor. And there's anybody in there. <laughs> to the Dawson family, everyone that's here, we have the Progressive National Baptist Convention. Reverend Timothy Stewart, Stewart, our president. Reverend Adrian Johnson, our general secretary. And I do serve as assistant general secretary. We tie on pitch with general secretary. And I hope I said I am that too. If I'm going to find out. But Reverend Dawson was Mr. PNBC. That's right. Uh, yeah. Everybody calls me that now because I'm little PNBC, but he was the man. Yes, sir. He was. Anything about progressive Reverend Dawson knew about it. Yeah. I want to thank you, Ruby. I want to thank you. I call him Ruby D. 
you know, because she's a, she's a real movie. The other one makes the money, but she got money. Movie was always by his side. Always. Always. He said a for her, but he served in Monterey's apartment. He served in the state president's apartment on yep. BNBC. Yep. He served the state president, and he served in the And every last position he held, I followed him. He was the moderator at my ordination in 1982. Everyone else was dead but him. And I went to him, I said, Charles, you know, you're the only one alive on my certificate. Reverend Parker, Reverend Hutchinson, Reverend McKenzie, Reverend Batts, Paul Rowe, Reverend Rita, and Sister Rita, all were gone but Charles Dawson. Now I stand here with a certificate in my pocket with all dead people. <laughs> but it's all right though. Because they were there when I started, and I thank God for them. So we're gonna miss Reverend Dawson. We thank him for the trail that he's made for me as a young preacher. And I appreciate his life, his legacy, and I do personally want to thank you, Ruby, for just being Ruby D. Yeah. We thank these persons for those very kind and meaningful remarks that they shared with us over the relationship between them and Reverend Dawson. Amen. Thank you. And now we call for a musical selection of the Little Rock Baptist Church of the Choir. He's all over me. Sing to the glory of God. Amen. And amen.
Missionary Baptist Church, the Baptist Association, and the person of Reverend Nimrod Timothy Beach. God be the glory tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is how we do it. When we come to celebrate a giant such as this, it ought not be no dull, dried out, morning kind of service. Praises ought to do what praises do. When we come to celebrate the life, the love, and the legacy of Dr. Charles B. Dawson. Reaching the joy of Jesus. A little early because my pastor just stepped to me here. Celebrating my 27th anniversary. Just closed me out this afternoon. But I could not not be here to celebrate this God man that have touched the lives of so many of us. Who has allowed his wisdom that anointing that was on him like no other. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Dawson was an excellent teacher. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. All you had to do was sit in his presence for Sing a little while. Sing it. Sing it. That's true. And all of a sudden, you could start writing notes because in a general conversation, he's dropping pearls of wisdom. That's right. That's right. And I believe that we still need that today. Young ministers ought to sit under the feet of an older minister that have been through some of the roughest times and roughest seasons so he can teach you how to weather the storms that arise in your life. It was he that taught me that when the storm comes, don't always put the blame on God. God is not the one that sends the storms. But every now and then he allows the storm to get through. And we ought not get mad when the storm comes. Because I just said to them this morning that we paid for windows in our church that the manufacturer told us could withstand winds of 130 miles an hour. How would we know if it's true? If the winds at 130 miles an hour never blow against you to test it out. We need to understand that I was looking at the program, seeing these pictures. Man of wisdom on the front. Man of prayer in the middle. Man of passion on page number three. Because you did not see him without his wonderful bride. That's right. That's right. The first lady of the first lady. Amen. Sister Dawson is a class act. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. She is the kind of first lady that one would need in her corner, in their corner. Right. She knows how to calm storms. And then she knows how to start when she needs to choose. <laughs> don't you dare her the love and the level of love that she has for not just her husband but for ministry. That's right, that's right. Dr. Dawson believed in the power of teaching and yes. preaching. Yep. Policies and polities, he knew them well. You could sit down and he could tell you the rights, the ins and outs about being a Baptist preacher. That's right. To allow you to know that he didn't just, amen, get there by accident, but he paid some dues. Yes, he did. An anointed man of God that we all love and know, and we all want to miss him so. Yes, amen. A few days ago, the Lord called him to a better place. A place that we all, if we live right, are aiming to get to. So the deal is, he just happened to beat us there. And the good news is he can, amen, put in a word for some that might need a word. But one thing about this God man, he served as 
sir. Moderator of the New York Missionary Baptist Association. That's right. Served as the president of the state. He served as the moderator over the moderator's department. Amen. Served on the regional level. Yeah. Dr. Dawson was well-rounded in what he did. Now, it says Charles B. I don't know what the B stood for, but I would like to just put in the word and say best. Because he put his best foot forward, his best efforts forward, his best leadership, his best teaching, his best ability. He used everything that God gave him to give God the glory. And so tonight we come to give God the glory. I want those that are here from the New York Missionary Baptist Association, wherever you are, rest on your feet as we salute this stalwart giant in the Lord. Amen. Also, anyone that's here from the State's Department, look at God. Look at God. To God be the glory. Would you give God a good hand of praise? Amen. To be here to God is proud. To be here to celebrate the pastor, the proud, past emeritus of this wonderful church. Yes, I got to say this in closing. One of the best fellowships we had was when I was a young man in West Baptist. Right. We would come here in the month of June, celebrate Men's Day with Pastor Alvin Barnett. Yes, yes. And my God, what a time we would have at yes. Little Rock. Yep. And I was always blessed to see one of the churches that had so many Baptist men, Baptist, good-looking black men in the house of God. And I say that for a reason. We know the sisters are always going to show up. But Dr. Dawson had an anointing that attracted men. And there was men of all and men of amen spiritual anointing in this place and we thank god because that was one thing that i always found about him he was not intimidated but he would he, would, he should be more appreciated for the wonderful things that he has done we're going to say farewell to one that have touched us all and it's going to be a hard pill to swallow knowing that he has transitioned but to god be the glory let's continue to keep this family in prayer because he was one of the best pastors, best teachers, best moderators, best leaders, best dads, best husbands, best grandfathers. And let's celebrate the best that God has sent for us. Continue to give God the praise. Thank you so much, Reverend Nimrod Jeffy Fitchwa. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just to continue moving along. Sister Ruby and to your wonderful, loving family, I want to personally thank you for allowing me to preside over this service. Reverend Dawson meant a lot to me. I was just thinking of all of the pastoral years of his service here at the Rock. 35, wasn't it? I've 36, I preached for my believe I preached from every one of them. His predecessor, Reverend Besselou, was my friend. Amen. Persons who were very meaningful to him in his life. Reverend John H. Nichols. And the list is endless. And they were all friends of mine as well. Reverend Dawson meant a lot to me, so I feel honored. You, could have, you and the family could have made a selection among any of these capable and qualified and learned ministers and pastors to take this position that I'm standing in tonight. So I want you to know I feel highly honored. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. I still have reactions every time there is second Sunday in October for the last 30 odd years of mounting this pulpit, climbing in and out to bring the word of God to the Little Rock family. Amen. God bless. And now, Christian friends, expressions from the Little Rock Baptist Church family. Two minutes, please. Clergy representative. Minister D. Stephen 
make a motion. Followed by the academic ministry representative, Deacon Jesse Woodbury, who is also the chairman. And then membership representative, Sister Antoinette Little. And then musical selection by the Little Rock Baptist Church Combined Choir. In my name, in that order. Praise God. Man, giving all the God who's the end of my life. And I want to thank Pastor Craig, Lady McCray, uh, as a very important people. John 3 16. Confirm your VIP status was said for God, so love the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe Him shall not perish and have everlasting life. So that includes each and every one of you right. today. I want to thank Lady Dawson, who was my first Sunday school teacher. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Give it up. Give it up. And I want to thank the Dawson family for sharing Pastor Dawson with us. There's a lot of people that are willing to share anything with people, but when you're willing to share someone for more than 30 something years of service, you got to be appreciative of his wife as well as his family. On behalf of the clergy family of Little Rock Baptist Church, I want to acknowledge Mr. Edwards, Mr. Blackwell, and my mother in the ministry, Reverend Dr. Evangelist Perkins. I want to make this real quick. I remember growing up, uh, I didn't see a lot of role models hello somebody. And, uh, and I remember they said this poem by Shel Silverstein. He said, the tree grows in Brooklyn. But being from East New York and Browns, but I didn't see a lot of trees growing in Brooklyn. But then when I came to Little Rock Baptist Church, and I met a dog guy. I know he worked for Con Ed. I know he was a preacher. I know he was a pastor. I know what he did. But I know in my life he planted seeds. All right. That made him a gardener. So why did I plant a tree in Brownsville or East New York? I think of another great poet, Tupac Shakur, to who said that a rose grew from the concrete. And I'm happy to be one of those roses that grew from the concrete. I know these ministers, and there's other ministers of the trees. I think of Dr. Hand and Dr. Lewis, who grew up, and I think about Pastor Gene Maurice McRae Jr. And I think about something. I say, you know, Pastor Dawson was an anomaly. They said the average expectancy of a black man is 21 years. But this brother outlived everything critics said. He outlived. Fires couldn't take him. Car accidents couldn't take him. He kept growing his race. And while I think about Moses, one day of the day, while I think about Moses, in Deuteronomy 34, he said the Israelites mourned Moses for 30 days. Well, this was all Moses. So we might mourn for more than a month. We might do a little more. We might have the Hebrew, Hebrews, but we definitely some Hebrews. And while we'll mourn and cajole, I want to think about something real quick. I was talking to my son, and I was doing a little game with him, and I was teaching him anagrams, and I said, Angel Santa. And I said, if you rearrange the, the letters of Santa, you get Satan. He said, oh, I didn't know that, Dad. And I said, but if you take the letters dog, you rearrange them a little bit, you get the word God. You take the word evil and you rearrange it a little bit, you get the word live. I was stuck when Pastor McCrace had to speak, and I only had two minutes. I took the word funeral, and I said, man, this is a tough one. And, and when I rearranged the letters, I came up with two words. Nice. I said, it came out to real fun. He said, wait a minute, how is there real fun when you're more than someone who met so much to so many people? I said, well, it's real fun because somewhere I read it said that the joy of the Lord is my strength. So we are going to spend a part of the to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So we are ready to share it. Yeah, we can be there for that with joy coming the morning. And then I think about Brother Dawson. And he always ended up emulating emulated man since I was three years old. And he said something at the end of every sermon. He said these words. I'm glad about it. Thank you, thank you, Reverend. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And now, uh, close attention, ladies and gentlemen, a slight shift in the program, okay?
Let's adjust to it. A slight shift in the program. We're going to call upon right now expressions from the family as we get started. Deacon Administrator, Deacon Woodbury, followed by membership representative. <coughs> to answer that little. After Sister Antoinette Little will have come. We would like to call upon at that moment Lady Ruby Dulce. Amen. 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 So after Sister Antoinette Little we want to call upon Lady Ruby Dulce. Amen. 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 David Woodbury, won't you come? Amen. Followed by Amen. Sister Antoinette. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I did not meet Brother Dawson in the church. I met Brother Dawson in the hospital thanks to um, um, Sister Hubbard. She took me to the hospital to need Reverend Dawson and I thank God for her. I did not know what I was going to do in the church, but I remember I didn't join until Reverend Dawson got back. I went out with Reverend Dawson to another church, can't remember what church it was. He was preaching so hard, I don't know why, I didn't know why, but the next thing I know I was in the pulpit with him. <laughs> Right. And then the Holy, the Holy Spirit allowed me to join the church. He baptized me. He gave me the right hand of fellowship. He married me, my wife and I. We went on vacation. He gave me a beautiful vacation gift. I enjoyed it. No wonder I have to know what he gave us as a person, though. And I really enjoyed it. We took the place we went. And then God put on my heart to be his assistant. And I thank God for working with him over the many years. But he went, I went. Mm -hmm. And I love working with the Reverend Dawson. Thank God. But Reverend Dawson preached a lot of good sermons. But I would never get the sermon that he preached. I think it put on another preacher, because he about them bones. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I never saw preacher yeah. yeah. hook up them bones to bring the Reverend Dawson to hook up them bones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He put up them bones together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And when he was preaching them bones, he would jump in here, he would jump in the big bone, hook up the, so many bones he had, but he was done. <laughs> the next sermon, so many, but the other sermon I love, he preached so many, but this one I love, and I think he preached not too long ago. Um, what's on my mind? Don't let your prayers be too late. Amen. Oh, wow. Every time he Try to, you know, you, you know, really those in that third gift. When you see them tears, you look out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tears, when you see them tears, look out. Yeah. When he preached that, don't let um, your prayers be too late. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that stuff when I told the pastor, and I said, my brother Dawson told me this church today. And he couldn't stop me. You know, brother say, I'll be finished in a minute. Y'all might want to go, but the Holy Spirit, now he can keep on going. And we was spin, uh, I think that's what called the shot it out. You still got it. Yes, he was a preacher machine. And I thank you, Sister Dawson, for allowing me to be in his life just for a little while. To the son, thank you for allowing me to be in his life. Thank you so much. But most of all, I thank God for allowing me to be his sister. When he went, I went. Another time he's with Jerry, the coach of time to. Where his daughter's son <coughs> follow him. I want to support him and his wife. So I thank the family. I love Reverend Dawson. But God knows. He knows what me and Reverend Dawson had. He used to go to the pills together. He'd come by the house. I fried him fish. He loved to eat. He went to Girl Beach, South Carolina. I called my sister. I said, Sister, my pastor's coming down. And he loved fish. You take care of him, and I'll take care of you. He went to Merrill Beach and contacted my sister, and um, they had a feast. So I just thank God 
allows me to be in his life. Amen. Amen.
needed to do. And he didn't do it for me. He gave me questions to go look up. And then when I looked them up, he said, why'd you get that answer? And he made me go back and look up some more. And I thank God for placing him in my life. D.D. James once said, nothing just suddenly happens. Everything that happens in your life is already in plan. God already has your life mapped out. So he already knew what I needed in my life in order for me to get where I had to go. So I thank God for that. I had that privilege and I take that honor so strong and I don't take it lightly. I am grateful. My heart is going to be so heavy. But at the same time, it's so light because I know he's no longer suffering. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that God has a better place for him and he's already up there looking down on us. Smiling. Saying, do the right thing. So you can get up here too. Yeah. Yeah. Stick to his word. Little Rock members, we have to. Make him so proud of us that every time you do whatever you do, a small voice right now comes in the back of my head. And I'll say, now, now, now. You told me, you know that's wrong. I can hear the small voices. I can hear the scriptures he tells me that I should look up and read and how I should walk as a Christian, walk boldly. And I thank God for him. And I thank God for you, Ruby. And it's not going to be easy. But God is going to make a way. Yeah. He's going to yeah. carry you through yeah. in a way that you cannot imagine. Yeah. He when the morning comes, as yeah. the Sister Brown used to say, right. everything is going to be all right. Yeah. So pass the thoughts in, rest, sleep on. Make us proud because we're going to make you proud. You have already made us proud. We can walk boldly in our shoes because we know we will talk well, train well, and I will live by every lesson he's ever taught me. Thank you. Mr. thank you. Thank you, thank you. And as Lady Luther Dawson is prepared to come, Following her sharing with us, the next voice will be the pastor, Reverend G. Maurice McGree Jr. to bring the eulogy. What a fine personality, great preacher, great pastor. I thank God for this pastor as the successor. To a great person, the person of Reverend Charles B. Dawson. That's right. He was handpicked by God, put on the heart of Pastor Dawson. Yeah. Reverend Dawson just carried out the order. Amen. The, the selection was made by God Almighty. Reverend Dawson just follow orders to do what God has put upon us yes, on. Reverend McCray will deliver this eulogy. Yeah. He is the most appropriate person to do so. Yes, yes, sir. Sir. Let's pray with and for him as yeah. he shall yeah. come in his own way following Lady Ruby Dawson. God bless you. Because Jesus Christ died and rose again we all have a new life. Yeah. As he hung on the cross, the last person he spoke to was a prisoner who was being executed alongside him. Even while suffering and horrible pain, Jesus cared enough to forgive the man and promise him a place in heaven. Pray for me as I try. This we write the song that we love so far. So we can do it.
to our presiding officer, Dr. Deloach. To all of the clergy that are going to open that pew. To Lady Ruby Dawson. Kaya Dawson family. Probably my father's children. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank God for all that has been said and done. Right. All of your words and kindness. I want to thank God for every one of you, your cards and your calls, your texts. so close to him, so intimately involved in ministry, yes, sir. so many lessons and times of chastisement. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about the ministry unless it was through Pastor Emeritus Mer Mer Charles B. Dawson. I don't have a pedigree, preacher pedigree. Yeah. No, no father, no, no grandfather, no preachers in my family. He, he's my only example. Yeah. Anything I know about preaching started in Genesis from that's the Emeritus Charles E. Dawson. Yeah. And we all we all are here mourning lost. And I can hear him in my voice, in my ears. I can hear him in my mind. Telling me to preach the word. Yeah. Yes. 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 Amen. Now I've been trying to scribble these little words on the paper and try to get a sermon together. Right. Right. My brother in love told me that if y'all don't know, y'all know I can preach, you'll never will. That's right. Amen. Right. I'll do the best I can to preach. I want to tell you all that Pastor Emeritus, Pastor Charles Dobson, loved Little Rock Baptist Church. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, we are, we are uh, forever indebted to his life and ministry. Yes, that's right. I want to call your attention to a familiar passage of scripture. Often say that our words are often inadequate to provide comfort in times like these. Yeah. Only by the word of God and be able to give us strength yeah. in our times of mourning. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Second Timothy chapter four. Nice. 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 In at verse number six, you'll find these words recorded. Yes. For I am now ready to be offered. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. At the time of my departure yes, is at hand. Yes, sir. I have fought a good fight. Yes, yes. That's it. That's it. I have finished my course. Yes, I have kept the faith. Yes. Yes. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Yes. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Yes, sir. That's it. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. For a few moments, I want to 
preach on the topic of the Spirit of the Lord shall die, the testimony of a true pastor. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Pastor. Yeah. The testimony uh -huh. of a true pastor. Come on, Jim. Come on. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Thank you, O oh God, for this precious and undeserved moment, this golden opportunity to share the word of God to your people. God, we come here tonight to celebrate life and legacy of our pastor. Yeah. Our mentor, yeah. yes. our friend, and our leader. God, I can't preach unless you preach through me. Yeah. Yeah. I can't move unless you move me. Yeah. I can't walk unless you hold my hand. God, hide me yeah. behind thy rugged cross. And men will see you and not me. Take me out of self, oh God. Use me for your divine glory. Decrease my grain now that you may increase in the name of Jesus. And God, if I'm too high, bring me down. Yes, too low, pick me up. Too far, draw me in. Yes, yes. Give me your power. Preach to your people. Pray, oh God, as something was said tonight, I will encourage this family. Oh, yeah. I will let the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Yeah. All who love the Lord shout, Amen. Amen. Testimony yeah. of a true pastor. Yes, sir. I solicit your prayers. I solicit your prayers. Yes, sir. Amen. Bless you, Lord. What have you dedicated your life to? What have you invested in and lended your life's service towards? What passion or purpose have you sacrificed for? What have you offered your blood, sweat, and tears to? Mm -hmm. What divine calling or commission have you answered and subsequently given all of your heart, mind, and soul to? What deep conviction pushes and compels you to get out of the bed every morning that you have decided to pursue and fulfilled, yeah. even unto your last dying moments. I heard this morning, beloved, the statement that the greatest tragedy in life is not death, but conversely, it is living a life with no purpose. Yeah. Yeah. My brothers and sisters, I want to submit to you that for over four decades, yeah. Our beloved Pastor Emeritus Dawson demonstrated before you and I how to live a life of purpose, divine calling, and destiny. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Pastor Dawson has been an amazing example in that while he was pastoring in those 35 years, and even in his retirement, he continued to teach us yeah, yeah, yeah. that in order to live a life that leaves a lasting impression on so many lives, you and I must be willing to give our lives away to something that is bigger than you and I. You and I must be willing to live a life of purpose. Can you holler back at me and say purpose? purpose? Must be willing to sacrifice. You and I must be willing to be dedicated and committed to something. You and I, beloved, must be willing to serve. As the Emeritus was committed to his family, he was committed to his church, he was committed to the kingdom of God and the call of leadership and pastoral ministry. He was called, he was uh, uh, committed to being a father and a mentor. He was committed to being a friend and a counselor. He was committed to being an advisor to young pastors and ministers. And as one of his sons in ministry, I think I'm qualified to talk about my spiritual father. And I talk about him for a little while. Yeah. Pastor Dawson was a faithful preacher. Yeah. Yeah. He was an awesome teacher. He was a prolific, a proficient pastor. He was a prolific prophet. He was a, a strong leader. But above all 
those things that I share with you today, the greatest part of his legacy is that he did all these things with love. Yes. I wish I had a little rock to help me in here today. But Pastor Dawson leaves with us a legacy of love. Somebody holler love. He, he loved us through our mistakes and he loved us through our disappointments. He loved us through our hurts. He, he, loved, us, he loved us through our inconsistency. He loved us through our instability. He, he loved us when we stopped coming to church. He loved us when we didn't support him. He, he loved us through our attitude and our contrary mindset and our com complaining tongues and our disrespectful words and action. He loved us when we didn't treat him right. He loved him. He loved us when, he, when we talked too much. He, he loved us when, when he didn't when we didn't honor and respect his wife and his privacy. Yet, in spite of all that, he still loved us. The doctor kept praying for us. He, he kept shepherding us with, with a shepherd's heart. And I and I think I ought to pause here pathetically and remind all of us preachers up in all of us pastors in this house that is it's not about how well you can preach. It, it, it's not about how, not how good we can put. It's not, a, it, it's not how hard we can dump the house. But, but the true measure of your ministry is in our ability and capability to love the sheep we've been called the shepherd. And if any sheep in the house that can testify and wave your little chocolate hand and say, thank God that I had a pastor that loved me in the middle and in the midst of my mess. Yeah, yeah. Hold it on. Our text tonight is a letter written from a father of the faith to his son in ministry. Apostle Paul wrote these words to his son yeah. named Timothy yes, sir. Yeah. to encourage and remind him of the task of ministry yeah. that had been placed in his hand. In the text, beloved, Paul's father, uh, life was coming to a close. Y'all yeah. yeah. gonna walk me through the text for a moment, won't you? Yeah. And he bids his son in ministry farewell. Yeah. In this farewell letter, Paul compares his life and ministry to a fight. Yeah. Yeah. This metaphor used by Paul has always fascinated me because of his implication. Paul reminded Timothy and all of us tonight that while he was chained to a Roman soldier, yeah. told his son in ministry, while he was locked up for being a child of the king, yeah. while he was locked up in chains, because of his ministry and his prowess, he told his son, wow, he said, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an offering being poured out for my God. He reminded his son, I fought a good fight. Told his son that, that he finished his cause. A war. We're, we're in the midst of a conflict. I wish I had some Christian soldiers in here tonight. Paul also reminded us in that this fight is not a physical one, but rather it is a spiritual one. Steve shared with us that over, over the life and breath of his ministry, every, every now and then Satan would try to mess with him. Satan, Satan would try to take him out prematurely. Satan would try to get in the way of car accidents and, and, and things of that nature. But, but you, you, you remember, remember Ephesians 6 when he declared, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Dawson, he kept on fighting. I wish I got somebody in here. I don't know what you're going through tonight, but I came to stop by to tell you, keep on fighting. Would you look at your name and say, keep on fighting? Beloved, this metaphoric word that is used here, beloved, is a battle we must participate in until we die. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, the old saints used to say, I serve the Lord till I die. That's why Paul also told us that in the fight we need to have the right clothes. Every Sunday, I would see him after meetings and members would be throwing dots at me. I could put, see him in the spirit saying, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord. Disappointment in ministry, things not going right, and, and, and be strong in the Lord. Some of us up in here were ready to give up, but have you got a call or talk with Dawson and he told you be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Paul said put on hold on, y'all gonna help me preach here put on the whole oh my God now the word Paul was suggesting that that in the army of the Lord every child of Christ a child of God will enlist to be a Christian soldier and I want us to be you that tonight we are laying to rest and celebrating one of God's greatest Christian soldiers. Pastor yeah. yeah. Mary was a strong Christian soldier that was steadfast and unmovable. Yeah. Yeah. This is relevant and significant to us tonight because these words are applicable to our pastor and Mary because life and ministry has tried to knock him down. Yeah. But as I already told you, he kept on fighting. Yeah. Maybe you've never been in a fight in your life, but the truth is, sometimes in this fight called life, it doesn't always, it ain't gonna always go your way. The reality is, in life and ministry is when you're in a fight, you're going to take some blows and get some bruises. In a fight, you might get knocked down or even knocked down or knocked out, but when you're in a fight, oh, uh, you got to, you got to keep this, this letter to his son, he said, I fought a good fight. He said, I have finished my course. Finished my course. Uh, this, this, this metaphor talks about uh, in your life, you're running a race. Dr. Dawson's been running a race for a long time. Been here for 30 plus years, 40 decades, walking the halls of this church. Yeah. Yeah. Served all over the country. Yeah. New York Missionary Baptist Association moderator. Yeah. Yeah. President of our state convention. Yeah. Yeah. Served on our national level. Yeah. Wherever you went with Pastor Dawson as he walked the halls of our convention, they knew him. He, he ran, yeah. he finished, he ran his race. Yeah. He ran his race strong and he ran it hard. Yeah. But I heard in the word it said the race is not given to the swift. Those that will endure to the end. Yeah. Not only beloved, did he tell the son I fought the good fight. Not only did he tell him that I finished my course, but he said I kept the faith. Father ministry was a, a man of strong faith. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. He called me to his house and told myself and Deacon Woodbury to go on a fast. Yes, sir. Fast so we can hear the voice of the Lord. Yeah. Many of us are saved today because of Dawson's faith. Yeah. Yeah. Some of us have been healed because yes, he laid his hands on us yeah. because of Dawson's faith. Yeah. Yeah. Some of us are going to that great sea called Jerusalem into heaven because of yeah. faith. Dawson's faith. Yeah. And I sat there, I'm closing now, and I sat there the last night before he passed. Yeah, yeah. I went to the hospital and Sister Dawson had been there all day and she left. Yeah. Sat there at the bedside of my Paul. Sat at the bedside of my Moses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sat at the bedside of my Elijah. I looked at him and I told him, Pop, I'm not ready for you to go now. 
not ready for you to leave us now. But I can hear as I look down on him. He said, I taught you. I did all I can do for you, son. I taught you how to lead. Oh, God. When you feel like he's left you. And I taught you how to preach to the same people who tried to persecute you. Yeah, I taught you, son, how to love those who laugh at you. And I taught you, son, how to lead those who would decide to leave you. Well, y'all have me close here for a moment. I, I taught you how to counsel the same people who will try to crucify you. Huh? And I taught you, I haven't been perfect, but I taught you how to bounce back from my own human imperfection. Yeah, I taught you that to minister through ministry challenges. I taught you, son, how to stand on the world.
much as you serve God with all your heart. Yeah, yeah. The people that suffer the most is your family. Yeah. You can't, can't always be at every party. Can't, every, can't always be at every graduation. Your presence can't always be with your own family. God has called you. It's the gospel ministry. So publicly, we want to thank y'all. Thank you. I already know you got two sons. You got two biological sons. As long as you live, as long as I live, you got another son. Not just me, but this is not about me. Man. Reverend Duff, you got some more sons around here. That's right. You got Alan Hand, you got another son. Yeah, yeah. You got Steve McGoogie, you got another son. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A whole lot of daughters around here. Yeah. We're here for you and the whole family. Yeah, man. Right. Yeah, man. God, continue the
We are all uh, Pop's grandchildren. And I'm happy to own it. And what my granddad was me, worth to me was my father, my dad. I didn't have a dad. He was a great, great grandfather to my grandson and a grandfather, the best grandfather to my son. And he taught us a world of things that no other human in life could ever teach me. These things about love, compassion, just overall a wonderful, wonderful man to know. I called on him many nights and I was able to visit him every day for the same time. And I was fortunate, my husband was fortunate, his daughter is fortunate, our whole family is fortunate. We all in this church are very fortunate to have had him. He has taught and opened huge arms for all of us. I mean, as Pastor McGray said, a lot of times family suffer, but we did not. He made time for each and every one of us, and I'm True. so very, very, very proud to have had my pop for as long as I've had him. He was 85, and he was planning trips and just living life. He never missed a beat. So I just want you guys to remember him from that way. And these are, again, our, these are the grandchildren and my son and his daughter, and we're just grateful, grateful, grateful that we had him as long as we did it. So, we have plenty of stories from sports to those car rides, but um, God put something on my heart to write to my grandfather. Leaders become great not because of their power, but because of their ability to empower others. True leaders don't create followers, they create more leaders. If I can find any quotes to best describe my pop, those would be it. A true leader in his family, church, and community. Growing up, I can truly say, and most of Little Rock can agree, I looked up to him as my superhero. He was tall with a powerful voice. He lit up any room that he entered. He had a presence about him that was undeniable. Growing up in church, between visiting other churches and traveling to the National Baptist Conventions, I often meet many people, and every time they found out Reverend Dawson was my grandfather, they would get excited, which also led me to get a little spoiled. <laughs> um, because of those experiences to meet so many people, I began to gain extended families. The greatest feeling for me is to be able to share my pop with so many people. It makes my heart smile to see the impact he has made on so many lives, near and far. Yes. One thing that inspires me about my pop is that he was intentional about living out his life's purpose. He has the biggest heart for people, especially for the youth. Yep. As an adult, every time I sat and talked to him and listened to his stories, I leave the conversation wanting to self-reflect. What stories will I have for my grandchildren? What impact do I want to leave on people that I meet? As we celebrate my grandfather's life, I hope that you too will leave here today wanting to find your own purpose. Every day we are given is a gift. And the way we can show God our appreciation is to live our lives with and on purpose. Thank you. Let us all say, Amen. 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 Sister Adrian, get Would you come? and acknowledge cards, messages of condolences, and the reflection of life with you.
the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Amen. This great man. He allowed me to be me. I was one of the church clerks here. And he allowed me to be me. True. But he tweaked my rough edges right. with love. Sister McKinney, you can't do it like that. <laughs> but he allowed me to be me. Nobody could teach that book of Revelation like Reverend Nobody could teach that book yep. like Reverend. Because this great man has such a legacy, yep. we do have quite a few acknowledgments. I'm not going to read all of the cards. However, I will read the letters of condolences from the various churches. The first letter from Faith Baptist Church, Pleasantville, New Jersey, Reverend Dr. Milton L. Hendricks, Pastor, December 1st, 2019. How sweet it is at evening after a long and well-spent day to close the eyes in slumber and rest from the toil of a day. It is doubtless sweet at the close of a well-spent life to turn one's face toward the sunset and quietly sink into the rest that knows no waking except in the presence of God. Whereas our Heavenly Father in His infinite wisdom has seen fit to call from labor to rest, Reverend Dr. Charles B. Dawson, we cherish his memory. As a tribute of our love and esteem, we resolve, first, that in humble submission, we accept the wisdom of God's will. Second, that we thank God for the example of his life, forever serving the Lord in unselfish service for his church and community. Servant of God, well done. Rest from thy love, employ. Whereas Reverend Dr. Charles B. Dawson was pastor emeritus of the Little Rock Baptist Church of Brooklyn, New York, and set the standard for a faithful, humble, dedicated, patient, and committed to the service of Christ and God's people, Reverend Dr. Charles B. Dawson was a special friend to the Faith Baptist Church and our pastor, Reverend, L. Mil Reverend Milton L. Hendricks. The fellowship between these pastors and people over the years has left an indelible mark on the lives of many. After a useful life, Reverend Dr. Charles B. Dawson passed away to be with the Lord and receive his eternal reward. Servant of God, well done. Rest from thy love, employ. He will be truly missed by all. And whereas we call on God, holy power, and know that he is in control. We look above to our Heavenly Father in all of his infinite wisdom and to his mercies untold. And whereas his passing has saddened our hearts, we bow in humble submission to the will of our almighty God, who doeth all things well and makes no mistakes. And whereas the passing of your beloved loved one has left an employed void, an empty void, in the hearts of family and friends, please remember that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. Romans, Bible stuff, eight, amen. 
Be it therefore resolved that the pastor, offices, and members of the Faith Baptist Church of Pleasantville, New Jersey, extend to his wife, Sister Ruby Dawson, our members, Sister Patrice Dawson, Gwen Jeffries, Jack A. Smith, and family, the Little Rock Baptist Church family of Brooklyn, New York, and friends, our heartfelt sympathy in the loss of your husband, uncle, pastor, emeritus, and loved one. Be assured that we will be upholding you in prayer and stand ready to assist you in any way we can. We remind you of the very core of our faith. Jesus is our savior, sharing our pain, accepting our perplexity and our anger, holding us close in grief. Let not your hearts be troubled, for we know the love that God has for us, and we trust that love. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a copy placed in the permanent records of the Faith Baptist Church, done by the order of Faith Baptist Church this first day of December in the year of our Lord, 2019. Reverend Dr. Milton L. Hendricks, pastor. The Bethlehem Ju Judea Church, Reverend Linwood Deans, pastor, Sunday, December 1st, 2019. To Mrs. Ruby Dawson and family and the Little Rock Baptist Church family, grace and peace be unto you from God our Father. The clergy, officers, and members of the Bethlehem of Judea Church were saddened to hear of the transition of your beloved husband, Pastor Emeritus, and our friend, Reverend Dr. Charles B. Dawson. Isaiah 57, 1 and 2 reminds us that the righteous perish and no one takes it to heart. The devout are taken away and no one understands that. The righteous are taken away to be spared from evil. Those who walk uprightly enter into peace. They find rest as they lie in death. With aggrieved hearts, we therefore place ourselves under the power of the Almighty God to offer our heartfelt condolences in his ending with a new beginning. Through Reverend Dawson's leadership, the preaching of the gospel, and his winning personality, many lives were touched by his ministries. His kindness has left an indelible place in our hearts, and he has left us a great legacy by his work and walk before the Lord God Almighty. The Bethlehem of Judea Church shares your sorrow and our prayers are with you. Rest assured, our beloved Pastor Emeritus Dawson now lives on as we all shall one day in one spirit. May God comfort your hearts and grant you peace. Victory was obtained, humbly submitted in the master's service. Reverend Pastor E. Deans, Pastor. New York Missionary Baptist Association Ministers, Wives, and Widows Department. 2 Corinthians 5 and 1. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. December 1st, 2019. Dear Mrs. Ruby Dawson, we take this time to pause, share our condolences, and express gratitude for the life of Pastor Emeritus Reverend Dr. Charles B. Dawson on behalf of the minister's wives and widows. In this time of great sorrow, please know that you are in our thoughts and our prayers. Not only is this a loss of a bold, spirited, and sincere man of God, but also a loving and heroic leader. 
He was the embodiment of strength and dedication. Reverend Dawson was a person that was always available to encourage and inspire those he loved dearly. He constantly demonstrated great support to his family and friends. While it hurts loved ones left behind, we hope that you can take comfort in the fact that Reverend Charles B. Dawson lives on not only in your memories, but with our Heavenly Father as well. Mrs. Dawson, our city mourns with you. Please know that we will continue to keep you uplifted in prayer. With love, Lady Phyllis Jebusitwa. New York Missionary Baptist Association, Reverend Timothy N. Jebusitwa, moderator, Reverend Eddie Karim, Vice Moderator at Lodge, Reverend S. Wayne Stokeling, First Vice Moderator, Reverend G. Maurice McRae, Jr., Second Vice Moder Moderator. December 1st, 2019, we, the offices and members of the New York Missionary Baptist Association, want Mrs. Ruby Dawson, the Dawson family, Pastor G. Maurice McRae, Jr., and the entire Little Rock Baptist Church to know that we humbly bow to the will of the Almighty Father as we gather to say a Christian farewell to the Reverend, to the revered and noble Reverend Charles B. Dawson. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. 2 Corinthians 5 and 8. Whereas Reverend Dr. Charles B. Dawson declared a great assurance in Christ and fearlessly led as the iconic pastor and pastor emeritus of the Little Rock Baptist Church, he also served devotedly as the moderator of the New York Missionary Baptist Association from 1982 to 1983, chairman of our moderators department and president of our state assembly as well. As a firm groundbreaker, Dr. Dawson served with integrity and great poise. He offered helpful advice and truly believed in impacting and shaping the next generation of leaders. Whereas the passing of our beloved Reverend Dr. Charles B. Dawson has left us with broken hearts we are encouraged and consoled by the words of Jesus in John 14. Whereas we embrace the Dawson and Little Rock Baptist Church families because we know that this is hard to believe. We all have been blessed to know Reverend Dr. Charles B. Dawson and our lives have been changed for the better. Though we are unable to replace him, we vow to identify the greatness in those around us as he did. We will demonstrate his love and support for all. To the family, we extend our sincere sympathy and will be fervently praying with and for you during this time. May God continue to bless and keep you. It is our prayer that he wraps his healing arms around each of you and strengthen your faith and trust in him. Therefore, be it resolved that a period of official mourning will be observed by the parent body of our association to acknowledge the transition of our dearly departed Reverend Dr. Charles B. Dawson. Be it further resolved, a copy of this resolution be given to the family of Dr. Charles B. Dawson and a copy kept in the association's archives by order of the New York Missionary Baptist Association. Humbly submitted on this first day of December in the year of our Lord, 2019, by the officers and members of the New York Missionary Baptist Association of Brooklyn, New York, and by the Most Reverend 
Timothy N. Jebusitwa, moderator. Progressive Baptist National Convention. He was in everything, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Dawson was in everything. So bear with me. These are just love letters yeah, bad, bad. that right. are being That's read right. Right. to his family right. Right. and his church family and friends. December the 1st, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. John 14 and 27. To the family of Dr. Charles B. Dawson, we the Progressive National Baptist Convention family wish to express our heartfelt sympathy at the passing of Dr. Charles B. Dawson. Our hearts go out to you as you endure your loss. Yet we must not grieve without hope, for we wait for that day of great rejoicing when all God's children shall gather and inherit the joys of heaven. Dr. Dawson has been a blessing to the Progressive National Baptist Convention, as well as those whom he served as pastor. He served in numerous capacities and held numerous offices, but in every instance he led with distinction. In times like these, encourage yourself in the Lord and rely upon his word for strength, comfort, and peace. We have his assurance that the ultimate end is not death, but eternal life. Be assured that we are lifting you up in prayer and stand ready to assist you in any way we can. Therefore, on behalf of the entire Progressive National Baptist Convention family, we offer this letter as an expression of our deepest love and concern for you. May God be your refuge and strength, a very present help in your time of bereavement. In Christ, Dr. Timothy Stewart, President, Dr. A. Wayne Johnson, General Secretary. New Canaan Baptist Church, Reverend Alonzo Wright, Jr., Pastor, December 1st, 2019. Dear Lady Dawson and family, and Little Rock Baptist Church family, as we know death is not an end, but a transition into a place free of pain and suffering, the Word of God reminds us in 2 Timothy 4, 7 to 8, I have fought a good fight, finished the course. Is that not the word today? Amen, amen. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. I, Reverend Alonzo Wright, Jr., Lady Victoria Wright, and the official board of the New Canaan Baptist Church, extend our love to you as we commemorate the life of our dearly beloved Reverend Dr. Charles B. Dawson, for he has been rewarded from his labor to rest, and may the work he has done speak for him. Amen. Today is a day of both joy and sorrow, for a great pioneer has gone to be with the Lord. Reverend Dr. Dawson will be greatly missed, but take joy in knowing that if we live right, we shall see him again. We pray that you continue to hold on to God's unchanging hands and continue to let God be your strength and your guide. We want you to know that we are here for you. Whatever assistance that we can be of, please call us. Humbly submitted, Reverend Alonzo Wright, Jr., Pastor. Yes. Sister Jenny's testimony. Yes. 
I am in a very precarious position. Okay. Two things. How many more resolutions <laughs> do you have? Okay, there's a letter from the Assembly State of New York and Albany and the resolution from the Rock Baptist Church. Okay, two. Yes. That all right? That's all right. That's all right? Read both? Okay, here we go. The Assembly State of New York, Albany. Peace I live with, I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. John 14 and 27. To Lady Ruby Dawson, the family, and the Little Rock Baptist Church. On behalf of the community of the 55th Assembly District, we are saddened to hear about the loss of this sage in the city. We know that he believed that there is a crown of righteousness awaiting him. Just know that our thoughts and prayers are with the family during this time of transition. We celebrate the life and legacy of Pastor Emeritus Charles B. Dawson. His dedication to the preaching and teaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ enlightened us all. Reverend Dawson served the Brownsville community as well as Little Rock Baptist for many years. We salute this general of the faith. We offer this letter of condolence as a sentiment of our deepest love and support to you. May God be your refuge, strength, and a resounding presence in your honor of bereavement, in your hour of bereavement. With loving thoughts, Latrice M. Walker, member of New York State Assembly, 55th District. And the last one, the resolution from Little Rock Baptist Church. Reverend G. McBray, pastor. December 1st, 2019, Little Rock Baptist Church, located at the above address, hereby makes the following resolution. It is with great sorrow and profound sadness that the Little Rock Baptist Church family conveys our deepest sympathy and sincere prayers to the family of the Reverend Dr. Charles B. Dawson in the loss of your beloved husband, father, grandfather, great-grandfather, uncle, great-uncle, brother, or whatever relationship he was to all. The official board and the entire church family join in with Pastor Jean Maurice McRae, Jr., and First Lady Latama McRae in conveying these thoughts to you. Whereas God our Father has seen fit in his wise providence to call our dearly beloved Pastor Emeritus Charles B. Dawson to eternal rest on November 24th, 2019. And whereas through his Christian testimony, he demonstrated a life of personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, which the scriptures teach in 1 Thessalonians 5, 13 to 18, that such persons are asleep in Jesus and will rise again, and that we ought to take comfort in these words. Whereas the passing of our beloved pastor, Emeritus Dawson, has left us with a broken heart, we acknowledge and accept the will of God. Although our hearts bleed with sorrow, we are comforted by knowing God will not put more on us than we can bear. We believe the words of Jesus in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, that encourages us to, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, 
and where I am, there ye may be also. Teachings on the book of Revelation. Hey! Revelation. His consistent preaching and strong administrative skills spearheaded the growth of the church. His wisdom and advice were often sought out and valued among our church family and friends. Pastor Dawson led with class and dignity, and it was a man who commanded respect and was loved by all who came into contact with him. And whereas Pastor Dawson was ordained to the gospel ministry in 1977, he was later appointed assistant pastor to Pastor Bezalu, and in 1978, Reverend Dawson was elected the third pastor of Little Rock Baptist Church. While serving here, Reverend Dawson got heavily involved in denominational work of the Progressive Baptist Convention. Pastor Dawson has served as moderator of the New York Missionary Baptist Association, president of the New York Progressive National Baptist State Convention, and president of the Progressive National Baptist Convention moderator departments, and served on many boards and committees of the PNBC. Pastor Dawson was a senior statesman among pastors and was looked upon for counseling and was well respected by all. Be it therefore resolved that we embrace the family. All of us have a common bond that will forever connect us for the rest of our lives. The church will always remember Reverend Dr. Charles B. Dawson because he was phenomenal, a pastor, teacher, Pastor Dawson was a strong leader, visionary, prophet, encourager, mentor, friend, counselor, prayer warrior, and a lover of God and people. Be it further resolved that the church, along with the family, will mourn his passing from this earthly existence and rejoice over his homegoing to be with the Father and his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in heaven. We realize that we all will be re reunited with him when we are called home on that great getting up morning. And we anxiously await this reunion to be in his presence once again. Be it finally resolved that a copy of this resolution is given to the family and a copy be kept in the archives of the church records for an everlasting testament to his memory as a faithful servant to his Lord, family, and church. Done by order of the church, Reverend G. Maurice McRae, Jr., pastor teacher, Dr. Cheryl Marriott, church clerk, Deacon Jesse Woodbury, chairman of the Deacon Board, Deaconess Alice Woodbury, president, Board of Deaconesses. Amen. The family will acknowledge all of your kind thoughts, prayers, responses, telephone calls at a later date. Thank you. so much. And now, Brother Sampson, we call upon the film director to come give us further direction and prepare us for the final viewing. And Little Rock Baptist Church will render selection during the viewing in my name. In your hands. Amen. God bless you. Like a good dish. Some things can't be rushed. That's right. Amen. 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 That's right. 35 years of service can't be rushed. That's right. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Deloach, for your wonderful officiating ability. Thank you to all of your friends, one and all. Thank you to this wonderful ministry.
Thank you to all of the co-laborers in Christ who are here in support of their brother. Thank you to our musicians. Thank you to our wonderful choir. Thank you to everyone that blessed us. We're going to open the casket. We're going to allow you to look at his earthly tabernacle that he once occupied, and then we shall dismiss. But I want to thank God for putting the vision in pastor's heart to elevate the current pastor of this church. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I also thank God that there wasn't a pedigree for him. Because all he needed to see was this gentleman. So now he has the commandment and the commitment of love to move forward. So once again, please watch the directions of the ushers of this church. We'll be assembling tomorrow morning by 9.30 in hopes of leaving by 10 a.m. We'll be escorting the family to the Calverton National Cemetery. And there we shall plant our past and there he shall rest until that get, great get in the morning.
Who I shall see for myself. By the eye shall be holy by the night. Brought nothing into this world and it certainly can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
Believe in him. 